Great stamp. Morning, Mick. Morning. Bye, bye, sir. Morning. Charles, can you open that for me? Thank you please? very much. Thirty. Thirty. Is that yeah. MPEG in that zone? That's MPEG in that zone. Got you. Nice one. Cheers, lads. Right. Good luck. See you later. Peg thirty. Last peg in the zone. So I'm fishing against everybody on my left and the anglers opposite as well in 124 in that section that's how they've zoned it out for this match so i'm gonna get the barrow loaded up it's a bit of a walk and i'll see you down at the peg Well, we've actually got a little bit of sunshine out today. It's very, very windy. Hopefully it's not going to affect things too much, but um, I was actually here yesterday. This is a double header weekend for me. Um, that was filmed as a live match. So if you want to check that video out, that was the Boston Masters qualifier. It was filmed as a live match from this venue yesterday. I'll put the link above and at the end of the video for you if you want to watch that video. On that video, I was right down there, right down in the corner or that bottom end down there, 87. Whereas today, peg 30. It's got to be probably five years since I've drawn this area. Uh, and as you can see, we've got the wind blowing in. It's planned to get stronger as well, the wind. Um, I haven't seen any fish out there yet. Darren Cox just down to my left. One, two, three. Darren Cox is just four pegs that way, four angles that way. He's seen a fish out there. Um, it's gonna be all about carp today. I'm not even gonna put a cage line in. It's all about carp. We've got to win the 20 peg zone. This is Feeder Masters, and we're actually fishing, or I'm fishing against, this is the last peg in this zone. All these anglers down to my left are in my zone. All these anglers there, and the anglers opposite, and going towards the very well-known peg, one, two, four there. That is all this zone. So the winner of that zone will progress through to the final at Tamar Lakes. I've just had a quick chat with John Arthur. He's just walked past, and he's told me that there's a gravel bar out there in front of me. It's about the halfway mark which is about online with that island. So I'm just going to cast a bomb out there. I'd always fish over a gravel bar if, if there is one there, just for confidence more than anything. John says there's one there, so I'm going to get a bomb out there and see if I can find it. Well, I've got to openly admit, I haven't really found any gravel out there uh, where John says there was some. Maybe it's changed or maybe I just haven't managed to locate it, I don't know. But I can't seem to find anything out there. So there isn't any gravel out there, but I've clipped up at 54 metres, which is short of halfway. I was hoping to have a bigger cast than that, but I've got a few metres past that that I can progress to if I do want to go further out. That is going to be the main line out there. I've also found some gravel at... It's actually, it works out at 19 metres and it's banging line with that tree. I found a little bit to the right, but there's definitely more, it's more obvious banging line with that big tree. So I've got a, another rod set up, a shorter, it's um, an 11 foot rod. It's the commercial feeder. I'm going to be fishing on that line with a method feeder, but I'm going to feed that with a cage feeder. I'm going to be putting some micro pellets in on that line and some corn as well. And I'm also going to put some eight mil pellets in there. The Boston Masters match that took place here yesterday, a lot of the carp that were caught um, were caught over loose fed 8mm pellets. They're used to those pellets going in. Yes, it's a completely different ball game when you're catapulting them in. You know, that is part and most of the attraction. However, they are used to those pellets. So I'm going to feed that line quite positive. I'm going to put some corn in on there as well because you can sometimes get some of those better bream lining up on that line. So I'm going to feed that line at the start keep it topped up while I fish the longer line and then hopefully come on that shorter line a little bit later on where I'm hoping there'll be some fish settled on it. I've only got two rods set up, okay? So I've got a 13 foot, this is the uh, Horizon XD. 13 foot rod, 5,000 reel. That is for the long line. If you can hear me over the geese. Yeah, 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 we know you're there. So I've got a 13 foot rod, that's for that line. That's it, bye bye. For that line out there towards the middle and that's the rod I'm going to be kicking off with. I've then got the commercial feeder 
which is 11 foot and that's because obviously I'm only casting 19 meters as it works out at because that's where the gravel is that's really a nice 3000 reel and again that's going to be with a method feeder so two rods and it's all about the method feeder I need to catch better fish today I'm up against all these anglers here and there are going to be some carp caught in that area somewhere so I need proper fish so it's gonna be a very patient kind of a day but a very positive day I need good fish and that's what I'm just gonna set my stall out for how about that <laughs> the first time I've seen any fish and there were two right there two pegs to my left nearly in front in front of uh, who's there We've got Dave Roberts here who's just gone back to the cafe Matt Benwell I think's the next angler but yeah, you obviously saw those. That's the first sign of fish we've seen. But it's a very different peg from what I've drawn here recently. So, uh, and if that wind keeps blowing, I quite fancy it for a few poles. Before we get going, lots of people have been asking me about the setup and a lot of people through lockdown have spent quite a bit of money on the tattle and they've been asking what kind of kit I'm using because lots of people know that I've cut down on the kit that I'm carrying. This is just a basic setup. I've got three nets out drying. You know the routine on fisheries. Get your nets dry if you possibly can. That is dad's workstation. He's currently down there chatting with Graham Morris, who he hasn't seen since the Iberian Masters. Um, I've got the compact box, two EVA bags, great for when it's raining, keeps everything dry. I've got the stick set up, as you know, the barra, it is peg 30, so it's about a 40, 45 peg walk. The planes are starting to come up again now. That's a sure sign that we're coming out of lockdown. There's definitely more planes here yesterday as well. Two rods set up just on a nice little roof set up like that, uh, a bit of an improvisation kind of a thing. New side tray, that is it, that's all I need and everything is covered up in here. So let me show you what I've got in here. It's still over an hour to the off, but I will show you what's going on in here because I know lots of people will ask. So rather than me miss out on messages and comments, I can show you now. I've got some pellets there. Okay, they're nice and spongy now, just micro pellets for the, um, for the method feeder. I've got some more there with a bit of boiler crush in there. Okay, I've got a little bit of uh, Ringer's boiler crush in there. There's a little bit of homemade one in there as well. That's for the long line. I've then got some corn. There's um, two small tins there. So I'll be feeding those on that 19 metre line as well as some 8 mils. Okay, there are 8 mils there and some of the, the red ones are the Robin Reds in there as well. These are the pellets that I would be feeding with a catapult, so that's what I'm going to put in on that line as well. And then I've got a mixture of hook baits, mini wafters. They are the all sorts. These are the slims, which I've been catching quite a few fish on. And then these are the washouts. The washouts for me recently have been catching proper carp. So uh, JCB Lakes, uh, I've caught a couple at uh, Holcroft Fishery and, and one or two others. They've been great, but I've been catching on the slims as well. And that is it, a couple of glugs, that's the homemade one that still hasn't got a name, so I will be trying that if I need to. And then just uh, some stick mix liquid, some of the hybrid, okay. And that is it. I've got a selection of feeders just so I can put different hook lengths on. Certainly on that short line, I can have bands on there or I can have some of these speed stops there for if I want to put corn on a hair rig, or obviously I've got bayonets as well if I want to fish a boilie or some sort of a wafter over that line. So that is it. It's really quite a simple approach today. I can see lots of anglers to my left, so I'm going to have some sort of an idea of what's been caught. But if that wind keeps blowing, I think it'll wake up one or two fish and it's quite mild. It's milder than it was. It's 12 degrees when we arrived. Yesterday morning it was just 5 degrees when we arrived. So yeah, I think, uh, I think there's definitely going to be some fish in this area. I just hope I'm going to be on them. That's it, the trap is set. He's into his first fish, I thought it was a skimmer or a bream, but he seems to think it might be an F1. 
Darren Cox down to my left, uh, one, two, three anglers down to my left, he's just had a small skimmer as well, so there's one or two fish being caught, albeit small, yeah, it looks like it's fighting back a bit this one, so he's casting just a bit further out than I am, obviously he's got the, the island to, to cast to as well, but yeah, it's fighting back that one, it must be a, an F1. F1? Yeah. Carl, well done mate. That's a good sign. Best bite so far. <laughs> What's been in? 15 minutes. Just dropped back, I think it's a little skimmer. Just seen a fish netted on the other bank. Um, looked a decent fish. I'm not sure where he's casting, I didn't see him casting. Then Matt Benwell, who is two anglers to my left, has just swung a little skimmer in. But no signs of any better fish yet, but like I say, this is, we've only been fishing 16, 17 minutes. I think this is gonna be a skimmer. Well, it could be a bream swimming towards me, but it seems to be getting a bit bigger. Oh, it is, yeah, that's good. Good stamp. Fantastic condition. Just hooked in the bottom lip. Great stamp. It's a good start. Just on one of the off white, uh, off white uh, washout. Like I said, I've been in 15 minutes, so I am clipped up. So I'm just going to go back to that same spot again now. I haven't got too much room to go past that line, to be fair. Skimmer? Uh, one. Yeah. Start, um... oh, off the mark. We're exactly one hour in. The sun's still out, but that wind's pretty chilly. Um, I've had to add another jacket on. Um, it's it's slow, basically. Um, on my right, he's got one carp. That is four pound, apparently, and he's got a skimmer as well. But he's not in my zone anyway. I've still got that one bream, two pound or whatever it is. Dave at the next peg, he's still got one small skimmer. Next one down is Matt Benwell. He's got two skimmers. And then Darren Cox is the next one down and I've seen him catch one skimmer. And that is it. I haven't seen any other, any better fish caught down here. I've seen one fish netted on the opposite bank. That's it. Um, I haven't heard anything. There aren't that many people walking about yet anyway. But like I said, I was here yesterday and even the lads that caught carp yesterday down in this area to my left, down in those teens, they didn't, you know, from what I know, they didn't really catch them while late on anyway. So it's going to be one of those matches. You know, it's like it goes, it's going cold overnight. And, you know, even even the pegs that are producing weights tend to be later on in the session anyway. So I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing. I'm ringing the changes with the glugs and stuff. Just constantly going through, obviously, the different glugs that I've got here. Different combinations. And um, just trying to... Just just get a fish basically you know like from an impact so crashing the feeder in um, I've tried a smaller feeder as well I'm gonna try a bigger feeder and a heavier feeder to crash it in just anything like that obviously I'm going through the changes with the hook baits there's lots of selections there to try I've also got a banded pellet to try if I want to try that like I say a lot of people were feeding eight mil pellets yesterday so an eight mil pellet can pick off fish so I'm just ringing the changes I'm on that same line 54 meters or 55 meters whatever it is and that's it i've just topped up the short line the 19 meter line with two cages of corn micros and a few eight mils and that's it i'm just going to stick on this i'm going to give this at least another half half hour to an hour and if nothing else is produced on this then i'm going to have a look on that short line In. I haven't had any more signs, no indications, nothing, no skimmers, no bream, nothing. No more fish caught on my right. 
I was just about to have a look on my short line, just to have an early look on that, just to see if there's anything there. And then Dave at the next peg's just up to carp. That looks like it's given him a real run around that. I'm going to fish this out. If I don't get anything on this cast, any sort of indication or anything, I haven't seen any carp caught at all here. We've seen one more caught on that other bank, but he's more to the right and he's casting towards the island. So if I don't get any indications on the rest of this cast, I'm going to have a look on that short line. Well done, Dave. First cast on that mini waft there, just a little skimmer. I think there's some little fish there on that line. And not what water after are they? Not after them. What them three pounders? only hand size skimmers on that short line so it's time for a refeed and then I'm going to go back long again this margin also looks really inviting I've seen people catch down this margin especially when the wind's blowing in it's usually a little bit later on in the year but I'm going to feed it anyway It's a part of time. <laughs> that second cast down that margin. The first cast. I hooked a fish and it cut me off on the reeds. Unbelievable. So that could be my get out of jail card if there's going to be some there on that line. It's where I fed heavy. I guess we'll find out. Well, that was a really nice bonus. Um, 
initially when I went down this margin it, I hooked a fish and it cut me off I'm really annoyed about that that was the first drop in on it it's just gone around the corner it's gone through those reeds and it's cut the, the line I mean this is eight pound line it's just cut it really annoyed obviously I went back in after that and then I, I caught an eight pounder which was obviously a major boost um, and then nothing for two or three drop, drops in and then I've refed again and instead of leaving it I've gone straight over the top of it just tried to be kind of really aggressive but, that cast I've, I've just got that fish that was probably i don't that's probably about 15 pound i didn't think i was going to land it to be honest when it went around the corner of those reeds but i managed to get it back and uh, and hold it so i've got that so i've got a 15 pounder an eight pounder um and that bream as well so i've got about 25 pound i've got to openly admit that i've no idea what we're, what we're needing at the moment there's an hour and a half left i haven't heard anything from down there which is really strange usually that means that nobody's kind of running away with it when it's as quiet as that so um i've just got to keep going i mean there's now an off left and obviously that would normally be the best time to catch on a short line like this and if they're going to be big fish like that then that's exactly what i need i've just topped up that short line and no more indications whatsoever so i fed it just to rest it i've gone back onto that 19 meter line where that gravel is i've got a fish now it might be a bream it'll just be nice to put a bit of weight in net while i'm resting that short line yeah looks like a bream putting weight in the net that's the main thing we are now into the last hour um I've just had a liner then so i'm going to keep watching my tip um i'm back down this inside i, I fed it uh, arrested it went back out to 19 meters onto that gravel uh, patch of gravel and i picked up a, a bream two pound wherever it was so that got an extra couple of pound i rested this swim i've just gone in on it and to be fair i'm getting one or two liners on it but they're not materializing into fish um, I'm just alternating between corn and wafters um, but I haven't hooked one yet so I don't even know what fish they are, what's there, they might be bream, what's there, all those small skimmers, I don't know but um, I need at least a couple of fish I'm sure. Um, I've just seen one caught up to my left, I think Matt Benwell's had one, um, I think Matt's, Matt's had one, that's two anglers to my left but I, I've no idea if they've had any more because while I've been fishing this margin I'm obviously facing away from them so and I'm just focusing on my march I, I think the only place I'm going to get any carp is going to be this margin now and we're into this last hour and that's usually the best time for a margin to produce the wind's still blowing in as you can see I'm feeding it quite aggressively with mainly pellets I just want to give the fish a reason to be there and I'm getting liners or one or two liners not loads but like I said I don't know what fish they are I need at least a couple of carp I've heard it's not fishing brilliant but I've just got to get whatever I can out of this margin now and hope, if I do hook anything and land it, that it's going to be a proper fish. The second I put that camera down then from that vlog, from that check-in with it, it went round. I thought it was a bream, but it's not. I think it's another carp. Yeah, it's another good fish. Bit of a shuffler. That was landed in under a minute. Oh, I thought it was a bream when I hooked it, and then it just come towards me. I'm not sure whether to refeed it, but I'm going to do it. I don't know if it's going to be the right thing to do or not. I'm just going to try and set it up again just pellets no corn or anything I want my hook bait to stand out I'm just gonna put two in and then go straight over the top been the one
Cheers, Dave. Well, that's it. Um, we haven't heard anything. I don't really know what's been caught. Um, I've no idea, obviously, everyone says those pegs are better than they are usually better. We haven't heard anything from the other bank. So I've no idea, I'm not sure what weight I've got. 50, might have 50 odd pound, I think. I'm, I'm really not very good at guessing weights on these bigger fish, but that last fish was probably the biggest one. I've lost two. One of them cut me off. That one wasn't on film, but it went around the corner and that cut me off, which was a bit frustrating actually. Um, and then obviously I've had that other one that I pulled out of. Um, about six or seven meters out so i fished a big hook i fished a number 10 i fished you know your proper proper gear um but you know to be honest when i first hooked it i thought it was foul looked I, I don't know if it was or not i don't know but maybe it's ironic that that's the one that i pulled out of the one that i thought was foul looked so maybe it, you know it wasn't hooked right i don't know we'll never know hopefully it's not going to cost me but we'll find out like i said we've no idea what's been caught uh, they might have really emptied it down there we don't know so i'm going to get some kick packed away and uh, I'll obviously film the weigh-in and uh, get all the results for you. What a unit! Gary, want to put more or you want to... Goody! <laughs> unit! <laughs> 57.8 total um, a big fish big fish but we've heard that they have caught down there in the teens um, probably 60 70 pounds possibly so we'll find out when uh, when I see the weigh boards well if I said I wasn't disappointed I'd be lying um, I've ended up missing qualifying by two pounds, um, 59 pounds has won the zone. Um, obviously, those two lost fish have cost me. The one that's cut me off, I mean, to be fair, there wasn't a lot I really could do about that. You know, it's gone around the corner of the reeds and it's just cut the line. I've had eight pound line on. Um, and then the second one that, uh, or the one that I pulled out of, not far from the net. Um, I mean, as soon as I hooked it, I turned around to dad because he was sat behind me and I said, I think this is foul looked. I never actually saw it as well. I saw the tail and everything of the fish, but I never could tell it. You know, I couldn't tell if it was foul up or not. Maybe it might have been, I don't know. Um, but we'll never know now. So I'm second in the zone, just missing out. Very disappointed. But that means that the quest continues. That means I've got to carry on fishing qualifiers. I hope you've enjoyed this bit of an um, insight into this competition. I've got loads more tickets for it. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those, and you want to continue following me through this competition and other competitions then hit subscribe and if you want to watch the match from last week or the one that i fished yesterday i'll put a link just there for you so you can watch that that is from this venue as well so thanks for watching i've got a two hour drive home i'm gonna have something to eat but not reflect too much on it and i look forward to seeing you in the next video